and a sense of hope for something bigger than ourselves. Then, maybe I'll wake up. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship to teach if we are called upon, to be taught if we are fortunate. We know full well that our planet and all its inhabitants are but a small part of this immense universe that surrounds us and it is with humility and hope that we take this step. In the 1970s, NASA, with the assistance of Professor Frank Drake and Carl Sagan, designed four man-made interstellar probes. Two were called Pioneers, and two were called Voyagers. Two of these probes are still sending data and images back to NASA to this day. They are way beyond Pluto, and in deep, deep space. However, you can hardly find any information about the data being sent back to us from the official NASA website and public relations offices. These probes were partly powered by plutonium, and a gravitational slingshot after photographing Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. Aboard these probes, there are gold-plated plaques of copper and video discs with recordings of people's voices, music, singing, and more than a hundred images of tribal people, landscapes, and the Earth's oceans. The video discs are sealed in solid gold cases and have a stylus to play themselves. Any intelligent extraterrestrial would be able to see what humans sound like, hear many dozens of different types of languages, look at our naked bodies, and be able to find planet Earth easily by using a map designed by Carl Sagan, showing the Earth's position in relation to 14 pulsar stars. These plaques and video discs are the perfect interstellar calling card, inviting any alien race to come to planet Earth. During the 1970s, the highest levels of NASA management were still being run by Nazis, such as Werner von Braun, who had previously been an SS officer developing the secret space program for the Royal Bavarian Third Reich. Not surprisingly, the golden disks of the two Voyager craft contain a welcome message from the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kurt Waldheim. Before he represented all nations on planet Earth as Secretary General of the United Nations, Kurt Waldheim was the President of Austria. He was also a former Nazi SS officer found out to be complicit with war crimes, and it was Kurt Waldheim who presided over a meeting about UFOs with Dr. Alan Hynek and Jacques Vallée at the United Nations in New York in 1978. Within months of this meeting, 
the Star Wars weapons program was launched, which, according to former Pentagon officials, allows US Space Command to shoot down invading UFOs using intercontinental ballistic missiles launched from submarines. It is very, very obvious that NASA invested huge amounts of money into the Pioneer and Voyager projects, carefully designing golden plaques and golden records which would entice aliens to our planet. However, where is the contingency plan in case of alien invasion? Where are the NASA guidelines on how to initiate communication with these aliens if they do indeed find these disks and arrive on planet Earth? Officially, all NASA astronauts I have spoken to say that they have never been given any training whatsoever. They've never been told how to deal with an encounter with an alien. It is very, very clear from the writings of the people who attended the meeting about UFOs at the United Nations that some kind of protocol, a secret protocol, to communicate with aliens had indeed been planned secretly by officials. It was the French ufologist Jacques Vallée who first postulated a series of hand signals, sounds and colours which would be used to communicate with aliens. It was Jacques Vallée who inspired the character in the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind, played by Frenchman Francois Truffaut. In the film, it is a Frenchman who is organising the first meeting with aliens, and who is in charge of NASA operations at a secret facility out in the desert, far, far away from where members of the public can see the first historic meeting of humans and aliens. Pioneer 10 was the first of these man-made probes carrying a gold-plated map to be sent into interstellar space. Pioneer 10 was launched by NASA on March 2nd, 1972 to study Jupiter and eventually study interstellar deep space. While the spacecraft is believed to still operate properly to this day, Communication has been lost since January the 23rd, 2003. Before this, Pioneer 10 was in extended mission to study the dynamics of the solar system boundary, including interplanetary magnetic fields, the solar wind, cosmic rays, and the so-called heliosphere. It seems that as soon as Pioneer 10 reached the boundary of the heliosphere, this is the place where the cosmic particles ejected from our sun end, which is a teardrop-shaped bubble that stretches for millions of miles into space beyond Pluto. As soon as Pioneer 10 reached the outer boundary of the heliosphere, all communications with it abruptly ceased. This was not the first time that one of these probes carrying a map of how to find planet Earth mysteriously ceased operating. Pioneer 11, also known as Pioneer G, as in the letter G found in the international symbol for Freemasonry, a very apt name considering that many NASA astronauts and technicians are Freemasons, was launched by NASA on April the 6th, 1973 to study Jupiter, Saturn, and is now out in interstellar 
deep space. While Pioneer 11 is believed to still operate properly, NASA say that communication with Pioneer 11 has been lost since November the 30th, 1995. This means that no communication has been received from Pioneer 11 for 15 years, and no communication received from Pioneer 10 for the last seven years. Just at the point when these probes were leaving the heliosphere bubble which surrounds our sun and solar system. Almost as if some external, possibly alien force, has terminated mankind's ability to penetrate deep space beyond the natural boundary of our solar system. Pioneer 10 was fitted with a star sensor that could recognize the star Canopus and therefore could always orientate the aerial back to Earth. Perhaps NASA are lying and the Pioneer data is being reserved for the scientific corporate elite at NASA. Or perhaps the Pioneer probes were hit by a meteorite. Another possibility is that sometime around 1995 and 2003, an alien intelligence discovered the Pioneer probes and found the gold-plated maps and used these maps to find our beautiful little blue planet.